Ciao friends! In this unplugged video I'm going to introduce uh, two new preview features introduced in the version 2.16 of DAC Studio. So I'm going to show in this example, which is a simple Contoso database, how to open DAC Studio as an external tool, so I will be connected to this model. And the first thing to do is going in Options and Advanced, because when uh, we have a preview feature in DAC Studio, we enable it as an optional feature, he's in the preview features. And we start with the show debug commas. This has been a very common requested feature, so let me introduce you how it works. You see that now we have in this area of the screen with the, this uh, debug commas uh, button, which uh, changes the, the code I write in my formula. How? So let me write some code, or let's get some code from uh, uh, our models. Here we have just sales amount is a regular sales amount. So let's create a measure in uh, Power BI Desktop and let's call this uh, special sales, which is a calculate statement with a number of uh, filters. So we want to calculate sales amount, but we want the product color to be equal to red. Then we want the brand to be equal to Contoso. And then I want also the country of the customer, country of the customer to be Canada. So if I made everything right, I can include this special sales uh, somewhere in my report. Let's say I want to show this number here. And I see that this number has been produced with this, uh, with this calculation. Now, this is the measure I have in uh, Power Desktop, I can copy and paste the code in DAX Studio, and yes, you know, we have the format query in DAX Studio, so we can choose to format this with a long line or short line, actually this, the format is the same in, in this case, let me just show, because I, I already wrote the code in a formatted way, so we don't see any difference, but when I format the code, the comma, the separation between parameters is always at the end of the line, and let me be clear, this is the right thing to do. Okay, this is the right way to format the code. Nevertheless, if we want to comment some part of these, um, of these uh, filters, for example, let's say that I want to ignore Canada for a moment, then if I try to execute this code, I will get an error. So let's see how to fix this. So let's see a practical case for this um, use. So if I go in Performance Analyzer and I capture the, the calculation for this visual, so for example, I copy this query and I paste the query here. And I also include special sales uh, as a measure in my definition in my report. So actually I want to compute this at the bottom and I run this code. Okay, so the value that you see here is the result of the calculation we see in the editor. I'm just trying to get some font that can be read without using the zoom. Okay, good. Now, let's say that in, in your analysis, you want to try to comment Canada. What happens at this point? If I try to run the code this way, I get an error. I get an error because the comma is here. Now, it's always questionable whether to put the comma at the beginning or, or at the end for this part, for for commenting lines, because uh, you you just move the problem. If you use the comment at the beginning, what happens if you want to comment the, the first line, for example? So there, there, there is always something that could not go as you want. But in the case of DAX, because we have uh, the, the, the common syntax of calculate that always has at least one argument, it happens that all our filters are always from the second argument and, and following arguments. So, in this case, in this case, and just for debugging purposes, if I use this feature, the back commas, the back commas simply switch these uh, commas from the beginning, from the end of the line to the beginning of the following line. And by doing that, it's much simpler to comment any filter. So for example, if I comment Canada, I have code that works. And the same happens if I comment red, and the same happens if I comment all of the filters. I don't have to worry about that. Now, uh, this way I can easily remove and 
restore a filter without worrying about uh, having a non-valid syntax. So this will probably save time when I debug my code. But when I think that I'm done, so when I, when I think that this is good, I can always restore the original format or I can just format a query and restore the original formatted code with the right commas in the right place. So this works when you use a query, but also when you copy and paste the code from uh, Power BI Desktop. So if I, if I copy the code from spe special says here, just the major definition, of course, I cannot execute this code, but I can format a query, I can switch the commas back and forth. The idea of putting the comma at the very beginning of the line is intentional. The idea is that this is a temporary way to, to write the code. You should always store the code in a more readable format. Having the comma at the beginning is not good for a number of reasons from our point of view. Of course, you might have a different idea, but if you want to move the comma in another place, it's up to you to edit the code. Because we thought that this makes it clear that you are doing something temporary in your measure that you have to restore when you complete the, the, the changes to your code and the simulation in your code. So this is the, the, the first feature that is the uh, ability to switch the position of the comma at the beginning or at the end of the line. And you probably noticed that we actually used in Duck Studio one uh, existing button here let me disable this feature because I want to show you what we removed. We use the, this swap delimiters button. And the swap delimiters button is actually not used much today because uh, Power BI Desktop no longer has, as a, as a default, the localized separators. We commonly use always comma as a list separator, so it's no longer useful to use this feature, the swap from comma to semicolon, the list separator. And usually this is a feature that we don't use. So, so of course, because we needed uh, some real estate in the ribbon, we had to choose to remove something in order to uh, display this, this button. But of course, this is a preview feature. So we wait feedback to understand whether to keep the feature as is in the ribbon, to move it in another place and so on. Now, let's move to the next uh, feature which is a feature that we introduced to uh, simplify looking at events that happens in the SQL Server Profiler, or better, events, profiler events that happens in the Analysis Services Engine that you can intercept from Duck Studio. So let's go to the preview section and let's enable this show XMLA commands. We're actually thinking about extending this to more to other commands, but let's let's focus on this one. What is this? Well, the idea is that when you when you edit the model with Power BI Desktop or also with other tools, but in particular with Power BI Desktop, you have an environment where you apply changes to the model. You create a measure, you create a column, you add a table, you modify a relationship. Every time you change something, the changes are propagated from the user interface of Power BI Desktop to the analysis services engine. When this happens, there is a profiler event that we can intercept. And this could be useful to, uh, to understand the cost of modifying a model. Let me, let me try to clarify. So first of all, once I enable the feature, nothing changes here. But if I click on all queries, all queries is a feature that is not very uh, used today, because uh, especially with Power BI Desktop, because usually if you want to intercept the code for an event, you can do what? You usually go in Performance Analyzer, you start recording, and then you copy the query. And this way, like I did before, this way you can retrieve the DAX code for each visual. So when I ref so if I close this and I use, uh, for example, I click on Litware and I select only Litware, or I select only this element, or I introduce a filter in the slicer, and for example, I filter, let's say, only products that have a certain color. So for example, uh, blue, blue products, this filter is applied to all the visuals. So every time I do something like that, I apply a change. You see that there is a new query, a new DAX query that is sent to the engine. So all queries intercepts all the requests 
made to the analysis services engine that, uh, because I'm connected to Parabay Desktop, is the analysis services engine that is running behind Parabay Desktop. But if I create a measure, if I create a measure, what happens? Let's try. So I create a measure, and the measure is called uh, test equal to sales amount, sales amount divided by two. This is just a, a new measure, right? When I create a new measure and click enter, you can see that several operations happen. And all these uh, XMLA lines uh, are lines that were not displayed before in previous versions of uh, Duck Studio and are not displayed unless you enable this feature. Because of course, this feature intercepts more events. So you can assume that when you keep, um, when you keep Power Bay Desktop open with this feature enabled and all queries enabled, we intercept more events. So you might not want to get all these events because maybe you are interested only in the DAX queries run by uh, users. So this XMLA event is what? Well, if you just double click each of these events, you can see the XMLA code sent to the analysis services to apply changes or transformation. And you can see that every time you change something, there is something happen happening that is not only pushing changes, but it's also reading metadata, updates in metadata to refresh the user interface of uh, uh, Power BI Desktop. Why did we create this feature? Simply because sometimes it could be useful to understand what is the interaction between a client tool and the engine, not just for the DAX query, but also for what happens in terms of refreshing the metadata. You want to understand why the metadata is refreshed or not, that could be an activity that you want to monitor and you want to understand. This is also useful for us when we debug external tools. We want to make sure that uh, all the events run as we expect. Of course, the same feature can be obtained by using SQL Server Profiler, but it is much easier to use uh, this feature and to enable um, the visualization of these events in this window. We are thinking about adding other events here, like the processing events, but I know that Darren is working on something more about that. So again, uh, give us feedback about the this feature, the XMLA event feature in the All Queries window, and the feature for uh, switching the commas from the end of the line to the beginning of the line when you want to debug your code and you want to comment filters. So I hope the, you enjoyed this video and remember, enjoy DAX and enjoy DAX Studio.